you guys and welcome to another episode of A Better You. I'm your host, Fernanda Ramirez. Welcome back. I'm happy to have you here. It is a brand new day, a brand new episode, and I am coming at you a little bit stuffy. I'm a little bit sick, so I'm hoping that that doesn't affect the episode too much. If I sound a little bit different, if I sound a little bit off, that is why. But hello, you guys. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to overcome body image issues and regain our sense of confidence and, you know, all the things to do with that battling insecurity, tips for embracing the body that you have, and some personal stories for ways that I overcome these issues. I feel like this is a topic that a lot of people struggle with, a lot of girls my age, honestly at any age I feel like this topic is relevant, and It has been a topic that I have been wanting to talk about for a very long time. The reason why I've wanted to talk about this for so long is because I feel like it is something that I often struggle with and especially being on camera all the time, being an influencer, YouTuber, podcaster, whatever, I feel like I'm seeing my face all the time and sometimes with seeing your face all the time, with having critiques, with being so perceived online, I feel like it can cause a lot of um, self-doubt in yourself sometimes and you know, just being a girl, in this world with societal standards, you know how it is, you know, I I know you know how it is. But anyways, before we get into all of that, because I have written a bunch of tips for you guys and a lot of things that help me and just, you know, before we get into all of that juicy tea, um, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on in my life. So, You guys, I recently just came back from the GovBall Music Festival. It's kind of fun because in the last episode, I told you guys that I was going, and then in this one, I've already come back. So we've done a full circle of this little experience, and I vlogged the whole thing, so that will be a fun video for me to edit and upload. That's definitely gonna be a project for me this week, and I don't wanna spoil too much right now since you guys will see everything in the vlog. But just to give you guys a little bit of a recap or some final thoughts, I had such a good time with my friends. There were so many good artists. Like, I actually think it might have just been better than Coachella low-key like just to name a few there was Post Malone, SZA, The Killers, TV Girl, Faye Webster, 21 Savage, Sexy Red, Peso Pluma, Don Tolliver, he also brought out Caliucci's for a minute, what else? Oh Chappelle Roan I think that's how you say your name. Yeah there were just so many good artists and my friends were just such a good time and one of my friends Maella who actually came with me to Coachella she's like very passionate about music like I know that there's people like me that listen to music, love the artists, yeah whatever you know we listen to it, vibe to it but she like loves music she's so passionate about them so like it was kind of wholesome whenever we'd go see a set and she just couldn't take her eyes off of the performer she was like zoned in locked in wanted to stay from the beginning of the set to the end of the set and there were times where I was like okay I can leave not because I didn't like the artist but it was just like I was just there for the vibes once I got a little bit of one vibe I would be able to switch to the next one but she was like no we are staying here till the very end which honestly was good too because I feel like every music festival that I've been to specifically all of Coachella's I feel like I'm I'm always more with other influencers who don't care that much about the artist. So it's like I'm in the VIP section. I'm trying to meet with people, network with people, talk to people, get some drinks, get some food. But this was like a we are here for the music and that's what we came for. So it was wholesome to actually see artists full sets and not feel the need to run away and just truly be present and vibe out. And I honestly feel like I don't know, I had some things going on in my personal life this past like few weeks where I've been feeling kind of in a slump or whatever and I was a little bit bummed, just a tad, just a tad before I went and I feel like they got me to be really present and I was trying to like get out of my head and just be there and I do think that it was very helpful. So that was super fun. As you can hear in my voice, I do feel a little bit sick. I can't even say that I'm surprised or shocked because we were all in the town. We were running around, going to the festival, walking so much. I swear I got like 20,000 steps a day we were going to the club we were going to the bodega we were getting wing stop we were getting freaking canes we were in times square like we were in the subway there's just no way that not getting sick was really an option so anyways I think it was worth it. I think it was fun. I did get to go to a few new restaurants and we went clubbing there, which was fun. We also went to a bunch of different coffee shops and we actually stayed in the area of Astoria, which is by Long Island City. So it's more in Queens. Hopefully I'm saying all that geographically right, but I've never stayed in that area before. So it was just cool to have a different experience and not be only in Manhattan. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys is I had a very, very, very wholesome interaction with a stranger. And I feel like I need to tell you guys because for one, maybe she's listening but for two 
It just reminded me of why I really love New York. Let me set the scene for you, okay? This is a little bit sidetracked, I know, I know, but we're gonna get into the topic in a minute, and I just feel like this is a story that I wanna tell you guys because I feel like I got a lot out of it, and I don't really see me telling it on a YouTube video. But the first day that I landed, I was waiting for my friends, and we couldn't check into my room yet, so I went to a little coffee shop by myself, I got a little latte, I got my computer out, and I started editing my podcast, and there was a girl beside me who I also saw was like kind of journaling, she was doing whatever, and and she ended up being like, wait, are you editing your podcast? And I was like, oh, I am. And she's like, oh my God, no way. Like, that's so cool that you have a podcast. Like, so basically we just started talking like that. And we probably talked for like 30 minutes. And she was basically telling me how she was just on like CBC, like a TV news network. And she was talking about dating in New York and how she wants to start her own podcast. And she told me that she was going to be on a TED talk. And I don't know why, but the interaction just felt like it was right place, right time. We ended up talking for so long and a lot of the things that she said are things that I felt like I needed to hear in a way. I heard somewhere say that whenever you are just like going about your daily life and something stands out to you, it is your spirit guides talking to you, whether that be in lyrics or someone's just speaking and like some sentence stands out to you or there's a coincidence or something. It usually isn't actually coincidence and it's something that you needed to hear. So anyways, when she brought up that she was doing a TED talk, it got me kind of excited because I actually have a TED talk image on my vision board for 2024 and I you know as you know I recently did a panel for the podcast so I was like very intrigued that she was doing this TED talk and then she told me that she wants to start this podcast thing or this whole idea about acts of kindness and that also really stood out to me because I basically got an opportunity from a company to make a video on acts of kindness and I had to make a whole presentation come up with a whole game plan like a video idea whatever and I had to give a 45 minute presentation to a bunch of grown people which is a little bit intimidating but again, we are going out of our comfort zone and we're facing our fears. So I made that presentation, whatever. I ended up getting chosen to make this video and it's just a crazy opportunity. So I'm very excited to be working with this brand. So that's, that's a little bit off topic, but I got the response that I ended up getting chosen for this campaign that same morning. So then when she told me that she was doing something with acts of kindness, I was like, this is clicking. This feels very meant to be. And she basically told me how like one of the things in the acts of kindness is that she wants to make the acts be a little bit less performative and a little bit more more within your community off of your phones and she's like something even as simple as sparking a conversation with a stranger can make them feel significantly better can make them feel lighter you know you never know what other people are going through and genuinely that conversation actually did lift up my mood considering like I just told you I was feeling a little bit down previously so she really brought up my mood and I sometimes when I'm talking to strangers have kind of my guard up and I think that's maybe the Vancouverite in me where people in Vancouver sometimes can be a little bit closed off and not engage in like stranger conversations versus when I go to New York I notice the difference immediately like everyone in New York is so down to talk to you all the time no matter what so I had my guard up a little bit when we first started talking just because I was like I couldn't engage the situation but I kind of let it go and was just present and was like you know what I'm gonna keep keep this conversation going like I'm actually very interested and we ended up finding that we had so much in common it was kind of giving like older sister vibes she just told me about like traveling that she'd done I told her about traveling I had done I told her like you know some tips about the podcast she told me about her podcast idea she gave me some recommendations for places to go eat in that area we talked about creativity and coming up with ideas and actually executing them I feel like it was just a conversation that was very interesting to me and felt very fitting for the moment that I was in at the time it kind of inspired inspired me and reminded me how much talking to strangers can be such a blessing in disguise. It never goes unnoticed. It always makes the other person feel good. So anyways, if she's listening to this episode right now, that was a really fun conversation. That's all that I wanted to talk about. I guess a little bit of a recap on my trip. Other than that, I'm back home. I'm glad to be here. Let's get into the topic. How to be more confident in our body. I feel like this is a jam-packed question that, you know, it's not going to be solved so easily with this podcast. But first of all, first of all, first of all, I want to say if you're listening to this podcast, I love you. And I hope that you are okay, that you are not too down about your body image, about anything that you're insecure about. I can fully say that I've been there. I don't even want to get too in depth with it just because I feel like I talk about it often and I don't 
want you guys to have that perception of me because I feel like sometimes having these negative thoughts they really are just truly fleeting moments they're 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 thoughts for a reason it's not reality it's not the truth and I think sometimes vocalizing those things or getting your head too stuck on those thoughts is kind of like bringing them to life when they don't need to be brought to life so sometimes that's why I choose to not speak about it even like not because I'm not trying to be relatable or you know be vulnerable with people online it's more just because like it's not necessary to make something out of nothing but having that said i feel like i struggle with insecurity a lot sometimes i just wanted to say that if you're listening to this you're beautiful i love you i hope that after listening to this episode you get a few tips on how to combat these feelings or these emotions and you just kind of leave this episode feeling not judged knowing that this is a safe space knowing that you have all the tools that you need to feel your best and you don't need to do anything to feel better you don't need to change anything about you it's truly your perception and the mentality that you have because it's truly all in your head you are perfect just the way you are your uniqueness is what makes you stand out and if anyone thinks otherwise or anybody is judging you for some reason anybody is picking you apart that means that those people should not be welcomed into your life or that you should probably set some boundaries with them to let them know that you do not like to be talked in that way you do not like to be held to that certain standard you know you don't want to be with that negative energy that's just just not for you so the first thing i would say if you're struggling with body image or you've realized that you want to make a change you don't want to feel like this any longer because it's taxing it's painful and a lot of the times it gets in the way of a lot of things so if you're deciding that you want to move forward and whatever i feel like having a little bit of a self-reflection moment is always the best way to go about it just to start you know if you're truly ready to leave this insecure picky chapter behind i actually did this like literally two weeks ago because i was just i was getting my head and i listed a bunch of the reasons for why i feel like i could be like this sometimes and one of the one of the reasons that came up for me which i'm gonna say just because you might be feeling the same thing is the need for perfection or wanting to uphold a certain standard or like wanting to not have any flaws genuinely and i think to answer that it's not realistic to hold yourself to perfection obviously and i think for me a lot of it comes from being on social media honestly and you know comparing yourself to other people and social media just being a place where people can edit themselves in general to kind of make them look perfect so it's hard to look at that online and think that you need to look the exact same when genuinely you don't even know if they look like that in person so yeah that was like a reason for me um i felt like another thing was that I was spending time around people that also place a lot of importance and value on physical appearance and I actually went out of my way to message someone that is close to me and I kind of was like, you know, we need to stop uh, talking so much about physical appearance or watching content that involves a lot of that like just in general physical appearance should be placed a little bit lower down on importance or topics of conversation and I kind of brought it up to them because I was like I just feel like it's not benefiting any of us and it's only making that topic take up more space in my brain when it doesn't need to be there so for that example in itself I feel like if you have someone in your life that values physical appearance a lot they always talk about it they're always talking about ways to improve and it's it's causing you to have have your brain be taken up with space from that topic i think that it's definitely worth having that conversation with that person or people and just kind of letting them know that you don't want to continue or engage in those topics from now leading forward like you want to work on your self image your body image and like those things are just not helping so i want to say that first of all i feel like figuring out where your insecurities stem from and then if you know that there's people or things that are causing you to have those ideas definitely erasing those or setting boundaries with them and trying to minimize them i also feel like sometimes when you do have insecurities they can feel like such a big thing to you in your head but challenging them and figuring out like who made me feel like this is sometimes a really important tool because you realize that it's actually not that big of a deal or maybe you heard one person one time say this little comment to you and i feel like thinking back to it and being like okay that's the person that caused this insecurity into my head kind of gives you you power over it and kind of I don't know I feel like it can help you kind of like reclaim that and be like okay if I know that this person said this about me I'm just going to not not engage with this person or I'm just going to tell myself this isn't a belief that came from me it was a belief that someone else projected onto me and that has nothing to do with me at the end of the day your thoughts are the most important and if you're okay with something but just somebody else is making you feel insecure about something 
that is their problem and not yours. So moving on from finding the source and what your insecurities stem from and who is planting these evil seeds into your mind that is causing you to feel ever so less than. Next up, I'm going to give you guys some tips that help me work through this kind of stuff and helps me honestly just feel like more grounded and kind of helps me regain a more positive perspective. Just reminders that I feel like I need to hear in times where I am feeling down by myself. The first tip that I have for you if you're dealing with things like this is to have a neutral mentality. Now if you don't know what body neutrality is, it is simply the act of taking a neutral stance towards your body, both emotionally and physically, not supporting the hatred towards your body's limitations or investing time and energy to love it either. You can simply be at peace with your body. Body. Before I dive further into this, of course, I feel like the ideal solution for body confidence is loving yourself the way you are, having a lot of love and respect for everything, finding ways that you can be body confident and body positivity, whatever, whatever. But I feel like if that feels a little bit distant to you, if it feels a little bit far, if it feels like you just are not there yet to fully embrace and love the way that you are, the way that you look, having body neutrality is something that can be tremendously helpful because you know you don't have to love it you don't have to hate it you just have to come to peace with it you have to accept it for the way it is accept for if something looks a certain way if your body is feeling a certain way whatever it is just accepting that it is the way it is so often we get caught up into things about ourselves that we want to change or that we want to look different wishing that we could look like that other person and it's just time and energy wasted knowing that at the end of the day this is the body that you're going to have forever there's nothing you can do to change it unless you get some sort of surgery or one of those things but if having a neutral mentality with this and just coming to terms and coming to peace with it if that's what it takes rather than having like hatred towards it then that is the best case scenario. For me, I think with the neutrality mentality, it's just kind of like, I need to just stop thinking about whatever it is that's making me insecure or whatever it is that I don't like. Just stop thinking about it. There's more important things in the world. As easy as that sounds, there are so many other things that you can focus your attention on and being down about yourself for something it's just a waste of time and nobody wants to be around people like that and sometimes that's the hard pill that i need to swallow i know i've been in certain situations where i'm around somebody that is constantly talking about things that they don't like about themselves or they're like overreacting about something that is super superficial and super simple and i know to them it feels like the end of the world but being on the receiving end of it it can be a little bit annoying and i'm not saying that i don't do this i I know that I do this but I'm saying when other people do this and I feel this it kind of reminds myself to not do it to other people because it is a waste of breath at the end of the day and I know when we were at the festival there was a time where one of us weren't feeling the most confident in what we were wearing and my other friend was just like you need to let it go you need to accept like we're all telling you you look good and all of this wasted time on focusing on what you don't like is just taking away from your experience and sometimes you just got to hear it the hard way you just got to hear it like that i think it's important to remember that our bodies are just vessels this is our outer flesh that yes is represented into the world but it is not everything our souls are what truly matter the inside of us is what truly matters and when you are confident and you have positive thoughts and a positive little garden inside your mind that aura literally expands outside of you and you have that shimmer in the way that you walk in the way that you talk in the way that you carry yourself and that is most important at the end of the day when you have these negative thoughts and your mind is just like overwhelmed with self-doubt people feed off that energy and they can feel that as well remind yourself that your body is a vessel you don't gotta love it or hate it but you can have respect towards it and be thankful and grateful that it allows you to move the way that you do it allows you to breathe it allows you to travel it allows you to partake in fun activities be with your friends it allows you to laugh it allows you to make expressions it allows you to do certain things that you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't have that etc. I know for me this past year I've been struggling a lot with acne and I feel like that really took a toll on my mental health whenever I would particularly focus on it. And something that I feel like helped me with that specifically was that just because I have acne it doesn't take away from the way that my face looks. I'm still beautiful. I still enjoy the way that I look. I still am able to do all
all the things with my face that I need to be doing. I can make facial expressions. I can talk to someone, whatever. At the end of the day, having acne, and this is my particular example, but having acne doesn't take away from the way that my face looks. Everything is still the same. It is just like added extra freckles. I feel like for that in particular, instead of focusing on my acne and being down about myself about it, or even going the other way and being like super positive about it, almost to the point where it was kind of toxic positivity and like saying to myself, I love the way I look with acne. I look great with acne. I rock acne. I just honestly didn't even think about it. I just thought those are just little dots on my face. They're kind of there right now, but like my face is what matters. Like my eyebrows are still there. My eyes are still there. My nose is still there. Everything is still there. It's just like a little bit of imperfections, one may say, that is on my face and I'm just not going to think about them. And genuinely, I feel like that eased my stress with which in turn actually makes your acne better because you're not overly stressed out about it. But that is just a little example, I feel like for me, where body neutrality kind of helped me overcome an insecurity. And again, with acne in particular, it's just thinking like, it doesn't matter that that's on my face. I know it's there. It's not gonna go away in an instant. It's not gonna go away if I stress about it. It's not gonna go away if I pick at it, if I obsess over it. I'm just gonna let it be. I'm gonna do what I know that I need to do to try to heal it or to try to make it better, but I'm not going to obsess over over it or invest time and energy to either hating it or loving it. I also think it's very important to know that any sort of insecurity that you have, when you are trying to get over it, it is a lifelong journey of acceptance and sometimes you're going to have better days and sometimes you're going to have lower days and I feel like that's just the way that life works and it might be something that you struggle with forever. So I mean, really the sooner that you can get over it or the sooner that you can accept it, the sooner that you can feel free in your body and feel almost weightless like nothing is weighing you down and just feel that confidence that feels so good and so liberating but you know don't be down on yourself if you've come a long way in accepting yourself and one day one comment throws you off and it kind of sets you back i think knowing that it's an ongoing process of acceptance is something that is just important to remind yourself of so you don't get super down on yourself if like something triggers you and it kind of makes you feed into those negative thoughts again Another tip that I have for someone struggling with um, insecurities or self-doubts is to avoid comparison. I actually have a full podcast episode on avoiding comparison, and I think that that's a big problem that a lot of us struggle with. Uh, again, I feel like in this time and age, it's just so hard to not compare when we see so many faces online, we see significantly more than we're supposed to be seeing. Something that I feel like I always think about is the fact that back in the day, back when phones were not a thing, back when we were just in our little communities you would maybe know like 50 people 100 people and that's the only people that you would see in your little town your little community and nowadays with phones you have access to seeing millions and billions of people on your phone the way they look and it's just not normal I don't think your brain is supposed to comprehend that many faces, that many features, that many different body types, even honestly in other ways like lifestyles, mindsets, uh, partners, relationships, friendships. Like it's honestly really trippy when you think about it that like you should not be exposed to so many things and in reality, you should probably only know the people in your community. I feel like taking away that pressure from yourself of wanting to look like this ideal version of someone is helpful to remind yourself of. If you are comparing yourself to other people, I mean, I guess know that you're not alone and everybody does it. Even your favorite influencers who you think are the most beautiful in the world and you're comparing yourself to them, just know that they are comparing themselves to the other influencers. And really, it's just a game that you will never win at because we always want what we don't have. I feel like humans have a tendency of looking for problems even when there isn't any and I think that's not that's not like a take that I'm saying I think that that's like something that is widely known humans are problem solvers and if there's no problems they start to create problems and I feel like one of them honestly can be in insecurities and self-doubt when you are like when your mind is just creating things to be insecure about or things to be jealous of when you're seeing all these people it's just your mind creating these like false thoughts that shouldn't be given into but again it can be hard if you do struggle with comparison online i think making your instagram feed a little bit filtered for you is one of the best things that you can do for yourself you can go through your following on tiktok on instagram on snapchat whatever and if there are people that you follow that make you feel bad about yourself because you're comparing yourself to them just unfollow them or you can work on those thoughts yourself and work on not 
being jealous or comparing yourself to other people and instead appreciating their beauty and appreciating yours knowing that other people's beauty do not take away from anything that you have and just because they are super beautiful in their own way you can't even compare yourself because you are two completely different people so that's what i have to say with social media either unfollow these people cut that comparison out of your life or accept that they are beautiful in their own way the same way that you are beautiful in your own way and their beauty doesn't take away from yours i also think it can be helpful to follow pages and Instagram accounts or influencers that have like maybe a little bit of a positive mentality in regards to body image. It doesn't need to be, again, the most toxic positivity, body image, self-confidence person because maybe that's too much for you, but even somebody that just shows unedited natural photos, people that kind of repost certain photos that kind of have like cute quotes that are about like body neutrality or just people that have positive feeds that actually make you feel better about yourself rather than worse. Another thing that I feel like I really like to do is find inspo of people that look like me. Of course, everybody looks different. Again, it's easy to compare yourself, but when people are so different to you, there is no point in even having an ounce of comparison or an ounce of jealousy because they don't look anything like you. And so I feel like for me, following people that are very diverse and that look very different to me or look very similar to me and have like the same background as me and we have similar features, sometimes that makes me appreciate features of myself more because I see it more in other people. For example, there's a few girls that I follow online that have very beautiful natural curly hair and right now my hair looks crazy to be honest if you're watching the video version of this podcast but I never followed people with like naturally curly hair before. I don't know why. I think it's just because I don't know, I wasn't on that side of like TikTok, for example, but I would never style my hair curly. And once I followed these people and I started watching their curly hair routines and I started seeing how they were styling them, honestly, I got way more into styling my hair naturally and embracing that part of myself rather than hiding it. And I kind of grew to love the way my natural hair looks. I specifically remember when I was in Mexico a few months ago, I wore my hair natural basically every single day that I was there. And honestly, I felt like it was my best look. I was telling my friends, like, I actually feel so confident with my natural hair right now. Now, like I've been seeing all these other girls have these styles that I've never tried before and now that I'm doing it like I feel like it really suits me like it matches my skin tone it matches my eyes like I, I just like the way that I look I feel like I feel like a Latina like I just look like I look good and one of my friends was like well yeah of course you're gonna like it and love it and of course it's gonna look good on you because that's the way that you are naturally and if you're embracing those natural features you're obviously gonna look the best version of yourself so that was cute and a nice compliment to hear and yeah so I feel like having that said I think having inspiration that you follow that looks like you can sometimes help you see the beauty and the features that you have and can kind of help you empower yourself on certain things about yourself that you may be a little bit insecure about. There are so many people out there that are beautiful and they look so different to each other and knowing that kind of gives you a little bit of a peace of mind to be like, how can I even compare myself when all these many people look so beautiful and they look so different. The other idea that I want to focus on or that I want to talk a little bit more about is the idea that your perception and your mind is everything. Sometimes you kind of have it in your mind that something looks bad and it just takes one person or someone showing you something different that kind of changes your outlook on things. I saw this girl's YouTube video and it kind of reminded me of a personal example so I kind of want to explain it to you guys but basically she was saying that you should turn your liabilities into assets and basically what she was saying was that like she was really anxious or like self-conscious about her stretch marks so that would be her liability but then she turned it into an asset by thinking like okay yes I have stretch marks but this makes me have a great bum and like I really like that so like I'm gonna focus on that and not on the stretch marks and so I feel like that is a good tool to use for yourself if you think about anything that you're insecure about or anything that you get down to yourself about think about how you can turn that into an asset and just see it in a different light changing your perspective can be so helpful and honestly just change the game for you i feel like i kind of could relate to this girl because especially right now I think there's a big emphasis on like being very thin and skinny and i feel like especially recently, now that I'm in my womanly body, my thighs have gotten bigger and I was kind of like comparing myself to all these people online that first of all are not even the same like ethnicity as me and they have very small legs and I'm like, why don't I look like that? And I was talking to my mom about it and she's like, yeah, you got these like Latina jeans, like we have like nice thighs, nice bum. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right, mother. You did do that. 
and that's iconic in itself and I shouldn't even be comparing myself to people that don't look like me when we literally don't even have the same genetics and like we won't look like each other even if I tried something else that I saw in this girl's video that I feel like very much stood out to me was the idea that the way that you feel about yourself people mirror back to you and this is something that I am very conscious of because I know that this happens and when you are down about yourself on something when you pick something apart and you bring that up to other people then other people are going to start to notice that about you and then they might have the same feelings towards you about it versus you could have the same exact body but if you choose to like embrace it and be very confident with it then other people will mirror that same way that you act towards your body and do that as well to you the example that the girl used in the video was that there was this movie where this girl was like overweight and at first she was very self-conscious about it and she was very down on herself about it and she would kind of make herself smaller and other people treated her that same way but then she got into like an accident and when she woke up she had this new sense of confidence and genuinely nothing about her body changed like she was the same person she was before but her mind all of a sudden tricked herself into being this confident version about herself and she was going around town acting like she was a 10 out of 10 as she should and she had all this confidence she was going up to people that were 10 out of 10 she was trying to flirt with them she was starting conversation with anybody and all of those people suddenly started acting in that same way as she was acting towards herself but they were acting that way to her because they were reflecting what she was feeling about herself so that movie kind of showed how the way that you treat yourself is the way that other people will treat you too and if you rock what you got that's genuinely all that matters because other people will see that confidence and they will feel honestly drawn towards it and people might honestly just respect that more that you are confident and rocking what you got rather than making yourself smaller or constantly feeling down on yourself about it especially as we talked about earlier since you can't change those things necessarily and just complaining about them is not beneficial for literally anybody and instead it's just kind of bothersome sometimes when they're overly criticizing themselves so yeah I feel like having that said I think something that's really important is checking your internal dialogue and the way that you speak to yourself and the way that you treat yourself if you are constantly saying bad things to yourself even if you don't mean to but you are genuinely thinking them and you're not even trying to redirect your thoughts it will it will turn you ugly and I feel like I've experienced that in the past where I'm just only thinking about the negative things and it just makes me ooze out this negative aura so instead of having that negative self-talk whenever you kind of feel it coming on kind of redirecting it in a positive way or if you're able to eventually those thoughts won't even be there I think a way that you can practice having a more positive self-talk is by giving yourself affirmations and just reiterating those things to yourself so that they kind of sink in and eventually they won't feel like affirmations that you're just saying to yourself but rather they will reprogram your brain and you'll actually just think like that without even trying these affirmations could be about your physical body or they can be about your self-worth or just anything to do with yourself that will bring out that inner confidence from within that is the most shining of all I think another way that you can include positive self-talk is instead of getting down on yourself about things just focusing on gratitude and being grateful for the things that you do have the assets that you do have, the way that your body actually works rather than what it looks like and just reminding yourself that at the end of the day it's a vessel and being grateful for that vessel that allows you to do all the fun stuff that you enjoy doing. Something that I like to do um, when I'm trying to get into this more positive mindset is setting affirmations on sticky notes and sticking them all around my room. I also think that doing like meditations on body positivity, body confidence, body acceptance, those can be very helpful as well and honestly whenever you listen to those meditations meditations not only are you kind of really processing what the person is saying to you but it might give you new ideas or new perspectives that you can shift into also listening to positive music gets me in that good mood and that good headspace and also setting my wallpaper into like something that's like a little reminder that reminds me to have that confidence from within or you know it might look different to you whatever that little bit of inspiration looks like putting that all around your space and making your world reflect that will only make your reality just the most uplifting that it can be another thing that I like doing when I'm feeling down about something is listening to podcasts like this or listening to TikToks or listening to YouTube videos where they kind of give you advice and even after just listening to them you feel empowered you feel excited and if you do like one of those things per day then every day you will start to feel that more and more and eventually it will just be who you are your reality is 
all that there is. If you can rewire what your reality looks like, that will shine through when people meet you straight off the bat. And your reality is all that matters to you. You know, people can be down on you. People can leave you negative comments. People can say whatever, but you have to realize that that's outside of your bubble. And if your bubble is that protecting my peace energy, it's just this peaceful little bubble around you, don't let that negativity affect you. It has nothing to do with you and they're not in your reality. My next tip for having body confidence, body positivity, and kind of disintegrating these insecurities or self-doubts, especially going into summer, is to practice self-care. I genuinely feel the best about my body when I'm taking care of it and it's so obvious whenever I'm feeling extra insecure, extra down bad, it's usually because I'm not doing, for example, there's times when I feel down about my body and the minute I go into the gym for even a week I immediately feel better my body may look the exact same like there is no major transformation between one week apart but I feel better about my body because I know that I'm doing the things that I need to do to take care of it the same way that even just drinking water sleeping a little bit longer they're all gonna help you feel better about the way that you are and they also like genuinely help your mental health which again in turn helps the way that you feel about yourself I think going into the summer it's a perfect time to be in this healing era in this self uh self-reflective self-healing self whatever journey because you do have a little bit more time the weather is nicer and i don't know i just feel like i personally always get into a more healthy lifestyle whenever summer does come around so if exercising regularly is something that you want to get into i 100 percent can assure you that it will help the way that you feel about your body and also doing these things that are a little bit more work but that are genuinely helpful for you will always make you feel 10 times better than getting temporary fixes by this i mean just getting like extensions or getting your nails done or like getting all these like additives on top of you that you think is going to make you feel better but it's not actually coming from within also this kind of reminded me of a different story that i want to tell you guys about but I remember when I got my hair extensions they gave me so much confidence because I was already feeling confident myself but then when I added them I just felt on top of the world and when I took these extensions out I low-key was at an all-time low I was like oh my god I'm so ugly I just hated the way that I looked without them it really did impact my confidence and I kind of attached my self-confidence on this hair which is so stupid to think about but genuinely i feel like this can happen to a lot of people with like eyelash extensions or maybe self-tan where you attach yourself to these like external things and you feel like that's what's making you beautiful when in reality it's you but anyways i got these extensions taken out i ended up feeling not too great about the way that i looked and i feel like I just didn't feel good internally and a few months later I ended up putting the extensions back in I thought it was gonna be like a miracle I thought I was gonna put these extensions back in and feel 10 out of 10 just like I did previously and to my surprise I put these extensions back in and I felt the exact same now I just felt self-conscious with extensions on and that kind of proved to me that the extensions weren't the problem it was the way that I felt about myself and then I would look back at photos when I cut my hair and I'm like okay wait the short hair wasn't even that bad why was I in my head about it like why was I thinking that these extensions were the thing that was the make or break thing and when I cut my hair I all of a sudden got ugly when now I put the extensions back in and I'm literally looking at the short hair version of me thinking that I looked pretty so there's so many things to unpack for one I feel like a lot of times in the moment you feel down about yourself and then a year from now you're gonna look back at that time and be like why was I ever thinking that I was actually I looked great the whole time I don't know why I was feeling insecure at the time and the second thing is that like all these external things aren't what makes you beautiful it's the way that you feel about yourself and you shouldn't let those things have a huge impact on the way that you feel and also when I put them back on and I didn't feel any better it's kind of one of those things where like all of these add-ons that you can put on yourself like little glow-up tips that are immediate quick fixes don't actually solve the problem within so doing things like eating healthy or exercising or resting those are the things that are actually going to make you shine and feel better from within and not only will those things actually probably make you physically look better which might ease some sort of body image issues but you will feel better about yourself you'll feel more proud about yourself you'll probably feel like you've been able to maintain more discipline you'll just feel good in your own skin so definitely this summer 
practice having a healthy diet, eating healthy, balanced meals that make you feel good from within, practice having a good night routine, a good morning routine, having a restful, long sleep because that beauty sleep cannot be overlooked, and also just exercising regularly, even if it's not like crazy amount of exercise or like su something super rigorous like weightlifting. Literally doing like a Zumba class will probably make you feel good because you're moving your body around and it might even make you just feel in your feminine energy, which I feel like will make you feel better. I wanted to go over a few more um, tips that I have for you, which I feel like kind of go into things that I've already touched on, but I just, I'm going to go through them anyways. But the first one being to separate your worth from your appearance. I think that this is a really important skill to acquire if you're able to do this. And it's something that I feel like I need to work on through self-reflection and through these affirmations. I feel like it's important to emphasize other qualities about yourself that don't have anything to do with the way that you look and to feel proud of those qualities. I even mentioned it to my boyfriend honestly because I read this and I thought that it was such a good tip but you can even ask people honestly to compliment you on things that are not physical and more on the way that you are and the qualities that you have not only do I think that that's like a good exercise for you and for the people around you but if you start doing it to other people it will definitely make them feel so good about themselves in fact you probably shouldn't even be really commenting on the way that people look unless it's a compliment but like sometimes it can be a touchy subject but I don't think anybody will ever feel any sort of feeling other than happiness if you complimented their work ethic their creativity their personality personality, um, the way that they act, the way they move through the world, their resilience, their ambition. Like if you complimented anyone on those things, they would feel so good about themselves. And if you told other people or had that conversation with someone else that you want to be complimented on those things, that will also make you feel so much better and so much more confident. If you want to even do this for yourself, I think it could be a great exercise to make a list of all your strengths, your talents, your qualities, your values, and just really looking at that list and being like, damn, this is me. Why do I kind of rock? Like I, I actually really love who I am. I love the interests that I have. I love the qualities that I have and sometimes I feel like if you're not used to doing exercises like this it can be a little bit hard to like think of yourself like this especially if you're struggling with insecurities or self-doubt a lower self-worth in this phase right now but try hard to have that self-compassion for yourself be nice to yourself and treat yourself as, as you would be treating a friend you wouldn't treat a friend by calling out on the things that they don't that they haven't fully mastered or things that they know that they're down about or things that you know they're insecure about or their negative qualities or whatever you would be pulling out their best qualities and telling them how good those are so do that same thing to yourself the next tip is to set boundaries with critical influences which again I talked about that earlier but if there's someone in your life who is super critical who is always judging you or judging other people just overall reinforcing their negative perceptions on other people's appearances I definitely think that having those conversations with those people can be super helpful and honestly beneficial for them because you're actually maybe making them self-aware to a problem they didn't know that they had also I think if you can't make this conversation super um like direct I think when that conversation comes up and you're aware of it maybe just gently steer Steering the conversation away from anything to do with the physical self can be really helpful for both you and them and your mental health. And then the last tip is to focus on health and not perfection, which we talked about perfection earlier, but I think that big focus is on health and maintaining overall health in your body and wellness because I think that looking good and feeling good, yes, can go hand in hand, but sometimes they are two different things. Some people can look good and actually be treating their body not in the best way. They could be doing unhealthy habits or you never know the details. And I definitely think that prioritizing the way that your body feels, your overall wellness, your overall health is what will make you feel the best, in turn giving you that confidence and in turn feeling the best about yourself. So definitely focus on health. I explained some of those ways that you can do that earlier, maybe even like your brain nourishment, what you're reading, what content you're taking in, just any sort of consumption and making sure that it's actually all healthy things and positive impacts on you. I definitely have a lot of episodes on healthy living and overall wellness. So if you want to check out any of those, I think they can be very helpful to you. I definitely have some episodes on how to glow up in internally of course i do have those physically ones as well but i feel like this episode is more on mentality and shifting your perspective into one that is more positive and has less to do with the physical body but yeah i definitely have a lot of episodes on that but anyways i think that is going to be the end of today's episode i hope that this episode gave you some tips some peace of mind a new perspective you got to listen to a conversation about body image again you are not alone if you have any sort of body image issues we all have it i swear 
I know a lot of influencers. I've talked to them. Everyone is the same. We all have the same issues. Everyone is struggling with something one way or another. And the best we can do is try to erase those negative mindsets and teach other people to not have those negative mindsets either. And I feel like, you know, little by little, we will all change the game. I definitely think that we are more body positivity, whatever, from a few years ago. So I feel like the more that we talk about these things, the more that we're open, the more that we're accepting, the better the situation just becomes. It's a long life journey. We're all trying our best. Have some self-compassion. Be easy on yourself. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to look a certain way, to be a certain way. We're just little floating specks on a rock in the universe. It really isn't that deep and you don't have to make it that deep. If it's causing you a lot of distress, just change your priorities. Make yourself busier. Stop focusing on things that don't matter. Honestly, that's kind of a tip in itself. Sometimes when I am thinking negative thoughts, it's because I'm not busy enough. And sometimes I just need a hobby. Sometimes I need to do my job more. Sometimes I need to see friends. Sometimes I need to listen to podcasts that are enriching and not brain rot. <laughs> Stay busy, keep your mind busy, keep your mind healthy, your body healthy, and surround yourself with positive people. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you soon, my beautiful people. Bye.